Okay, so for this second series, I made a few tweaks. I felt like the deck had a little bit too much beef in it, so I've taken out one Hex Trinker and one Tireless Tracker. Uh, the other changes are I've taken out one Abrade uh, as well. Uh, I've added in a Mana Leak and then two additional counter spells, one Sensor, which I think could be an annoying little trick. The guy, if we pull it off, if we pull off the main feature of that, the guy will wonder if we actually have a deck full of these and maybe he'll cause them to play around it. Um, I'm also interested in this reduce rubble uh, move as well. So it's mana leak, but for three mana. And then in the graveyard, we can do this rubble thing where we get a tempo. We can also get some free value off rubble from uh, Thought Scout if, if this card goes straight into our graveyard. Um, in the board, I felt like the board needed a bit of an update as well, so I've pared down the Dragon's Claws, taken away a cage, um, and I've added some additional sort of goblin-type hate, um, Fork Bolt Pyroclasms, because I feel like that's the main weakness of the deck. If the guy's playing humans and stuff that's kind of T3, well, we basically say we, we trust our Tarmogoyf to beat them up, but lots and lots of small guys... <clears throat> I think could be more problematic for this deck. Um, also just kicking around different types of hate. Uh, one new thing I'm interested in test testing out, I'm, I'm interested in all these counter spells, right? Reduce sensor as well as this one, exclude, which is kind of like you get to do cryptic command for three mana if if it's the right type of opponent. So I'm thinking Eldrazi, Tron, things like that, and get really good value out of this. The constraint for our deck, of course, is the mana base. We can't have double colors, um, but that's true anyway because of Blood Moon, so that's so Gigant Gigantha is in here, but also Blood Moon means that we only ever want single mana um, in the in the, con in the converted mana cost. Well, I mean, you could do something like the Royal Science is fine because it's one of each, and the, one of the two is red anyway, so if you've got a bunch of mountains. Um, so anyway, those are the tweaks. Um, so yeah, let's go and uh, see how we get on. Okay, got a game, Rake 17, 717. Um, and if you can hear the sound of children playing in the background, that's just my children playing in the background uh, during this extended period of lockdown. Uh, this hand is just okay. Uh, we do have the luxury of turn one keeping open passing the turn and either scouring or bolting. It is a keep. None of our really busted interactions happening here, but we could draw. Mandrels or Goyf would be really relevant. This is mine. Okay. Oh, if only we were on the play, he says. Yep, okay, so I'll just stick to the plan here. It's very unlikely that Bolt will have a target. Yeah, if he's just got it, he's just got it. Talisman. Oh! Uh, okay. I hope it's not some sort of control Tron, which is like my worst, most hated opponent. Mono Blue Tron is my most hated deck of all time. Don't mind saying. Um. Hmm. Yeah, just hold up Leak here. Can't see a reason to play the Hex Trinker yet. Uh, of course, it protects against get loose buys as a turn if he does have God Hand. We should probably just bolt. Um, Hex drinker, hold up, leak. I just, I just don't see us winning this game. 
reduce. Hmm. This is interesting. Hex drinker hold up leak, I think, is probably better to get the beats going. But he might be able to pay for the leak. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's close. I think if we already had a threat out, then reduce would be really, really nice. Uh, so I could untap rubble. Okay, he's thinking about... Maybe he's worried about me getting to uh, level 3. See, there's another potential counter spell card I was kicking around was Tails End, which <laughs> which would counter the ability of things like Expedition Map just so sweetly. But, I don't know, too conditional? Too much of a gotcha? I don't know. No, that's fine, we're just losing this. Oh. Okay. We could actually crack the eyelet here. Um, I think I like that move though. Uh, so we're one land behind, aren't we? We'd like to play tracker. Yeah, I think we just play it slow. Let's force him to reveal what his deck is before we head into uh, game two. So our leak and reduce are just all garbage now. Oh! What? You wouldn't risk that, would you? Oh, Shark Typhoon. What? What the hell? <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, what do we say to that? Um, bring in the stuff that works well against colorless Sharknado, seriously. 
Um, once he makes the shark token, I have no answer at all in these colors. Obviously, part to exile. I don't know how he's getting on. Um, is Grudge interesting here? What did we see? Uh, I'm on the play, so Grudge could be quite good. Maybe take it out again when we're on the draw if we win. Blood Moon, obviously fantastic. Um, that's not going to work this time. None of this stuff applies. Um, Bolt's pretty bad. Bolt's actually quite bad. Um... Tempted to at least take out three of them. I think things could be quite tough in game three for us on the draw again. If he goes turn one map. Anyway, we've got to win game two first, so maybe worry about that when we cross that bridge. Alright. Um, we have a grudge. We can kick off with a Hex Drinker on a, off a Stomping Ground, uh, or a... Yes, yeah, so this is actually a bit of a problem because there's no such thing as Breeding Pool in our deck. So... Turn 1, Hex Drinker off Stomping, or Steam Vents actually. Turn two. If it's map, I feel like we lose, but if he doesn't play him, well, actually, if it's map, we don't lose because we can blow it up with Ancient Grudge, even if we've, even if we've um, gotten a Steam Vents. We just can't flash Grudge back, so I think we can keep... Sorry, have I got that logic right? So... If we get Stomping Ground into Hex Drinker, we'd have Grudge for the map, but our counter spells and censorship are on ice. I think I'm okay with that. So I think our chances of finding a blue source is still going to be pretty high. That's our only green source in the, in the deck that can be fetched with Scalding Tarn. Okay. Power plant into nothing. Okay. Ah, oh, it's annoying. And we're safe to just level up here, I think, aren't we? Because you won't have the momentum to play and crack map. Losing to Sharknado. Most poorly acted movie in Hollywood history. There it is. Well, I guess we're crossing our fingers. This resolves. Those force of negations, I think. Man, not drawing us a, a blue source there is pretty over two turns is pretty bad. The game's probably still over if we don't. Can flash back the grudge. And that's not a horrendous turn if he gives me something to hit. 
moment. Ah, interesting. Blue source. Countering an activated ability would be so nice, wouldn't it? Um, it's pretty obvious what I want to do here. I can level this guy and have enough mana left over to stubborn denial. Okay. I can't, I can't play... Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's how I'm going to get the most out of my mana here. I can also, if he gives me an opportunity, cast Sensor. So we'll level up, switch on stubby, stubby D, swing, and then on his turn we can hopefully Sensor something. Uh, if we can't Sensor, hopefully we can Leak, and if we can't Leak which we'll definitely be able to leak. Um, but if we couldn't, we would, we would have stubby. Blast zone. <laughs> okay. So obviously we're very, very worried about the hex drinker, so that's fine. Good cycle sensor here. Three and tap to destroy everything with CMC1, and he has the mana to do so. So I'm tempted to sensor, uh, to cycle sensor, sorry, and then once I've cycled it, there'll be two extra cards in the graveyard to potentially switch on mandrels because we expect the hex drinker to die. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Like, that's a big loss of uh, tempo if he's going to take a whole turn to tap four lands. And uh, does he have to sacrifice the blast thing? He does. That doesn't seem like a very good trade to me. Uh, land would have been better. All right, let's swing. I can tap out for mandrels. But then I lose the gr or I can tap out for mandrels. Oh yeah, hex drinker actually. Yeah, yeah. So I can one, two, three, four, five, six, and still hold up stubby D. That seems really good. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and stubborn denial is up. This is, it looks like a crappy card, Mandrels, but this is the power of, you see how, like, we're using every resource in the graveyard, and Gurmag is a bit bigger, but he costs one more. Um, it's a pretty decent combo. Field, sure. Host stone won't work. Nice. Come on, land me. Goyf's pretty big. We could just play him, couldn't we? Does he shorten the clock? Sufficiently. He doesn't actually shorten the clock, does he? So for that reason, we won't play him. Really want to make the most of this. So if he if he has a, a decent non-creature spell, if he has any spell at all, we can leak. Whereas if I tapped out for Goy, if I'd only be like if he was able to resolve a difficult creature, I wouldn't have an answer. Okay, 
Let's see what he's got. Can only do one thing. Cryptic command. Um, tempted to try to reduce here. Might as well. All right, fair enough. Yep. Okay. Well, he might be able to come back here. If I had two blue sources, I could have had leak and stubby D, and now worm coil, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's pretty hard to come back once they resolve a bit permanent. Ah, it's just one turn too late. Stretch out permanence one or more colours. I don't want to go hunt master. I think with mandrels, he'll be scared enough of the mandrels, won't he? I'd be sacrificing my ancient grudge. It's only plus one actually, so the tracker would threaten. The tracker would threaten to. Yeah, but I won't have ferocious if the tracker's out. Mm. Can't do nothing. Okay. Oh, it's not going to work. All right, all right, all right. Whatever. Okay, so I got a game here against Gorm Play Magic. Okay. Oh, I think we can keep. Opponents mold of five.
so I assume it's the uh, amulet. I found that amulet absolutely sucks against this deck. Um, just Blood Moon wrecks it, and then if he ever sticks an honest primeval, then the hex drinker just walks past it. That's the plan. Uh, how much do I care about a second forest? Yeah, I think I'll get a second forest. Oh, it's just disgraceful. Uh, this is a really favourable matchup. Um, it's very hard for him to get anything moving. I feel like our deck is quite strong on the play in general. Mana leak when you're on the play into something nasty on turn three. Very, very difficult. This might even just bring out the concede. I think that if he finds a basic forest, that stupid dryad overrides the moon. So that's something to bear in mind. Yes, it's just so hard. So he has to bring in hate, he's going to have nature's claim and things like that. Uh, there's not much that our deck wants to do. A braid is good for killing the stupid amulet thing. Uh, so is Grudge. This could be good. Dryad, Azusa, Titan, obviously. Uh, none of this other stuff is useful. Okay. So the, these are on the possible list. I feel like Huntmaster isn't amazing against him. It's not going to be a grindy sort of match. Bolt is still good because of the Azusa, or actually Flame Slash is better. So we're at least doing that. I don't want to trim the threats down too low either. These are just good. Although on the draw, are they as good? I can mana leak Dryad or Azusa. I can censor on my on my on his third turn. And you can also just bolt them there, right? But do I need two ancient grudges and an abrade? Do I really want to hedge that much against the amulet? I don't think so. Got two cards that hit amulet. You can make a case, couldn't you? I think we'll go like this. I think we'll go like this. Hmm, yeah. We have a moon, we have a leak. Oh. Oh, alright, you go ahead and you go ahead and start flashing. Basic forest. Well I just get a basic basic forest and play Hex Drinker. I think I would. Very tricksy. 
Birds is a big hedge against Blood Moon. So he's not Amulet, maybe, I don't know, I don't know what he is. So all of his stuff has flash. Happy to leak a big creature here if that's what he's got in mind. No? Sure. And depending on who it taps out for, we just abrade the bird. Seems like something we want to stop. So maybe this is bring to light or something? Is that what he's doing? Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Pretty sweet. I don't know if these guys... Ah, oh, crap, I can't get a basic island off it. Um, so with that in mind, I feel like I want to... Well, I'm definitely not... Rubble could be quite important against this guy, actually. So the idea being that he's going to have... He's going to go up to 10 mana, right? Yeah, I can't play a creature, so... I don't want to play Blood Moon without a uh, basic island out. Hmm. May he, though? So can he play land now, or...? Birds. Sure. So should I braid now? Do I care about a braid? He can do anything he wants. He's got ten mana. Yeah, reduce just doesn't seem that useful. I think I just have to pray that what he wants to do, he wants to tap out for. Whatever he wants to do, he wants to tap out for. It. Thank you. And we'll get a stomping. Why didn't he wait though until? Because he could he could save up. Well, he doesn't know that I'm mana leaking. Well, he does. He's seen mana leak. He could have waited till the end of his turn so he could have ten mana. Tough deck to play against this one. Yeah, rubble. Barney rubble. 
Um, so, a braid and goif. Rumble's no good until he actually commits, which he isn't going to. Okay. Yeah. I still think we're, I think we're going to lose. Gonna draw three. So what does this do? It does X infinite turns, is that how it wins? It still feels like it would struggle with a moon though, right? So I think that's my only hope now, is to go for moon and hope that that matters. I still have double blue mana for time walk or whatever it is. You just feel like the game's slipping away. So we're all in counter spell. Is good. Pyroclasm seems like it's going to be good. Uh, or maybe Fork Bolt. Be quite good against those annoying birds and stuff like that. Certainly better than Lightning Bolt. Grudge had no target, so let's take that back out again. Uh. Yeah, we're on the play again, so I don't think Mystical is as good though as these other options. Uh, he's not doing enough blue stuff for it to really be good. 59, i got to pick something. The Dryad isn't here, so we'll put the Flame Slash back. And I think I'm happy with, this, with the bird removal. Sweet. So on the play, we're definitely looking for Moon. Turn 1 Bolt would be amazing. Got all my colours, I've got a Turn 1 Bolt. And a Turn 1 Stubborn Denial, actually. 
which is very, very interesting. So we'll get a steam vents no matter what, because I have all the land. Yeah, all I need to do now is draw a blood moon and I'm pretty happy. No, okay, fine. Uh, yep. So it's just events tapped. Ooh. Uh, I don't know if I need another green source. I probably don't, but I'll just on the off chance I do. Mystic Snake is a cool card. I actually thought about that for this deck. Hootie. Yeah. Sadly, we don't have a a threat, and we're both, we're allowing him to just build out his uh, his world. Bad. This is not good. One, two, three, four, five mana. Not enough for mandrels. I think it's just draw go. We're, we're just in draw go mode. Still got stubborn up my sleeve, haven't I? Like if he plays a fourth land, taps out for wilderness, I can deny it. Please do that. Please see my defenses down and tap out for wilderness. You, other creatures, other creatures you can try. She's actually not that bad. Okay. Right. Okay, so we should have. Okay, yeah, so I can rubble. Thank you. No, no, don't, don't. Go away. Go on, shut the door. Pouch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, later. Shut it. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see. Rubble time walks him. But I can't drop a threat. Whereas I'd rather have mandrels and stubborn. Which I can have if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then hold up stopping. I think that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five, six. The longer the game goes, though, the more favorable it is for him, obviously. Taps out for wilderness. Fine. Well, it's not too bad. So 
So her ability, instant speed, everyone gets bigger. Um, yeah. I feel like Huntmaster's decent here. Uh, he will eventually grind the game over my way if I can keep countering what my opponent's doing. thing is he needs to cast a spell or it transforms. Sweet. Ah, oh, hexproof. Right, right, right. You and other creatures you control have hexproof. Okay, right. So it becomes a 5-6 when, when Thingy activates itself, right? But I'll still have two 4-4s. Four and then I bolt it afterwards. Seems like the way to go. Um, do I care if it eats the wolf token? Yes. Do I want to offer him that? I don't think I do, actually. This is a sorcery, okay. So I can transform back if I do two things this turn, if I cast two spells this turn. So I think it's better to wait. I could also um, cycle this. No, that doesn't make sense. Okay, we'll pass. I don't think I really want him to transform, to be honest. So he will transform now.
think exclude isn't what I want here, is it? Ugh. That's not good. Uh, and you're stubborn. Ah, oh, rubble is switched on. <laughs> Sweet. Shame, I need to cast nothing to get the... Uh, uh, is there a case for sacrificing the Huntmaster to take him down to eight, cast rubble, cast my second mandrels... It's interesting. He goes to eight. I lose the Huntmaster. Right, he still has a Chumper. We'll assume he still has a Chumper. I play my second Mandrels. I then have 12 power and toughness on the board. He doesn't get to untap. Yeah, I think this makes sense. I think we can we can win the game with Rubble. I think he's he's miscalculated there. He's fully tapped out. Wow. He's letting me live? Okay. I think... Oh, no, hang on. He does... Oh, okay. It's up to three target lands. Sorry, I thought it was everything. Up to three. What is that? Was that blue? Blue. Blue. Uh, there's red. Mm, careful here. We want to play mandrels and hold up to Nile. Which we can't do. Uh, yes, we can because we have sculpting time. All right. Don't know what's going to happen here. Right, Rubble. I thought it was all of his landstone on tap. That's not as good as I thought it was. Right, I need to pay red. Like this. One still would have to believe that he is not going to be a happy man. One, two, three, four. Holding up Bolt seems... worthwhile? Do I care about my graveyard? I guess I don't. Okay, dude. Hmm, annoying. Yes. Woof. Tight one, although I, even untapping and swinging, am I definitely winning? I think I still am, right? Yeah, okay. Good games. Keep winning dice rolls. Ooh, I like. Decent. I can do turn one any of my three turn one things. Um, and given that I'm going to want to get a basic forest with the vista. Oh, he's multi five. That sucks. Um... Oh, he's multi four. I don't know, might just have to see if he wants to play on. OK. 
Okay, he wants to play on. So given that he's done that, I think just dropping a threat is probably the way to go, rather than long playing with stubborn denial and maybe whiffing. We can always bolt um, on our second turn. Uh, if he does play something meaningful, like uh, Noble Hero. This forces him to have some kind of answer or tempo to keep up with this. So we're going to leak whatever he does next if he doesn't do something meaningful now. Mm. So which way to go here? To leak or to bolt? That is the question. To leak or to bolt? Well, I'll need some red mana no matter which way we do it. I think it might be leak, actually. Uh, something's telling me leak. Leak. Leak his ass. I still like leak. Not worried about life title, obviously. Yeah, force negation, don't care. Very happy for you to do that. You don't have that. Now we bolt. Or do we? So if we bolt and he goes land blighted agent, I'll feel pretty stupid. I can't switch on stubborn denial yet anyway, but stubborn probably is irrelevant until the turn he swings. I'm not going to cash. I'm going to try and switch on stubborn here. Ooh. Yeah, maybe with this. Thankfully, haste and infect aren't two abilities that uh, easily intertwine. So stubborn is now a hard counter for any non-creature spell. Wow. Might. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. Yeah. Okay. Another plus two, plus two. Bolt or stubborn? Both are blown out to... Um, both get blown out to mutagenic, but he has one card in hand. I don't think the downside is, is high enough. I think we just win the game. Which one of these do I use, though? I guess stubborn. It's got a target. It's We're live. It's right now. It might not have a target later.
I think in either case was fine. He had to have exactly mutagenic to survive there. And yeah, look at this. We're finding we're finding a role for our stuff. Fry hits agent. An agent only hits nothing else. So it's in the maybe pile. Clasm is fantastic. Dispute exclude might be too slow. And a lot of the a lot of our deck of course is far too slow. Uh, we're in decent shape here though. Tracker seems quite slow. Reduced rubble seems slow. Sensor actually seems okay. Although we're on the draw. Yeah, so on the draw. Yeah, on the draw our counters get worse. Stubborn is still relevant though, saving our life on turn two. Mystical. It's really just Blighted Agent, right? Uh, tracker is bad in this matchup. It's too valuey, long term planning esque. I feel like the Scions could convert a four turn clock into a two turn clock if I had a decent creature and we were racing. Yeah. Blood Moon's pretty spectacular as well. We're actually pretty well positioned here. Okay, I don't know between Tracker and Scions. No idea which one's the way to go. I feel like track is just going to be a chump blocker against Glistener Elf at best. And a meaningless 3 2 for 3 at worst that you play just before you die. Too much removal to say no, we can get stomping ground. Does the new infect have to mulligan a lot? He's down to five cards here now. I used to feel really bad for my opponent when they would, you know, mull heavily, but I since learned that certain decks like Dredge or whatever are designed to mull a lot and You've got to take everything you can get against against them. So, okay, should we sorcery speed kill the elf? Normally you should right against infect. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use Lightning Bolt instead of Fork Bolt. What I'd love to see is another one and a Noble High Rock. One, two, three, four, five. I can't cast Mandrels, can't do anything else. I can Forked and Lightning. So I'll do that. Hold all that up. Might make him think I'm leaking. Maybe I was too hard on mana leak. Wow. Ooh, can I get there? One, two, three, four, five, six. I cannot get there. Next turn I can. Should I just go for it? He can't 
I think I can just go for this, right? I can just go for it. Then I have my clock. He has a five turn clock and I've got a hard stop and denial and two removal spells on my sleeve. I don't think he can counter this. He has spell pierce sometimes. Is the old version of Indec the old version of Infect had spell pierce? So if you can kill me from where you are, fine. That's off to you. I think all you can do is play a threat. Dismember! That's something you can do. Could have played around that. I could have played around that. I feel like an idiot now. Yeah, it's fine. You obviously can't let it live. Oh. So, if we cast Blood Moon and he responds with... He can't, resp he can't spell Pierce it. He would need to know in advance that I was going to play a removal spell. Yeah, this is a risk worth taking, right? This is fine. Put this on the stack. If it resolves, the agent is dead, unless he has two mutagenic growths, and even then I don't care if he uses them both. Oh, no one suspects the blood moon. Oh. Okay, so it becomes a three drop. A three, t a three toughness creature, right? Do I respond to that now? And I think the answer is yes, because if he has force of negation, force of negation, seriously, with two cards in hand, is almost unthinkable. But he could have mutagenic growth, so I'm going to bolt it now, while that's on the stack. This just feels unfair, doesn't it? Yeah, it just feels unfair. Like we're Toying with the guy. Now, I sound very cocky, but of course, infect can kill you from long range, out of nowhere. Okay. Um, he won't be casting any non-creature spells, so we will hold up fork bolt. Plonk a bit of beef onto the battlefield. Well, I can't stop that. How many copies of Dismember did he bring in? It's another beautiful thing about Huntmaster is the redundancy. And what a draw that is. So same plan as last turn. Opponent's heart sinks. Yeah. Tough one for infect, especially after my side. But man, those four four bolt lightning bolt just made me feel so Safe. Um, that was a good one. 